While already carrying one, drop your own disc. Put a dozen robots, programmed with these rules, into an arena with scattered discs, and something strange happens. Over an hour or so, this little swarm of robots works together to gather up all the scattered discs and leave them in neat piles. So, can we now make mechanical swarms, an artificial ant colony? Ants, it seems, are not quite as simple as we first thought. But these new layers in ant society have only been uncovered by long and painful study, by marking and following individual ants over long periods as the colony's fortunes rise and fall. The ants seem to have a complex communication network, and the shape of that network changes and adapts as the colony's size changes. Ants do far more than just follow simple rules. In fact, each ant has its own character. These researchers from Russia spent so long following individual ants they could recognize them even when their paint marks wore off by their different personalities. So, these complex colonies work not just because each ant is pre-programmed with certain rules, but because the ants can communicate with each other and adapt those rules accordingly. And that has set robot designers thinking. These machines at Penn State University in Philadelphia have an ant-like ability to communicate, both with each other and with a base station computer. They've been asked to search an area of ground, but not to search the same patch twice. They're not under remote control. They're following their own built-in search programs, but modifying that program to take into account what the other machines have done. It's another step in the direction of an artificial ant colony. So perhaps our future Mars rovers won't be working alone. Think how much more effectively we could search for life on Mars if we could set a swarm of rovers loose on the surface, each talking to all the others and coordinating their behavior like extraterrestrial ants. It seems extraordinary that humble insects might help humanity explore alien worlds. But an increasing number of scientists are realizing that nature can do far more than that. It could open up a future of new materials made in new ways. It could shape how we make and use energy. In short, it could transform the way we live on planet Earth. And all this potential has come from studying just a few hundred species. Yet there are tens of millions of species out there, and each and every one holds secrets that we've yet to unlock. Any one of these species could hold the potential for creating a new and sustainable future for mankind in ways we can't even begin to predict. The possibilities are limitless. The diversity of life on Earth is humanity's greatest resource. 
Yet it's disappearing at a rate that has only been matched in the past by a few cataclysmic natural disasters. But this latest mass extinction is caused by us, the very creatures that could benefit most from four billion years of biological exuberance. It's like burning the greatest research library on the planet. It was the evolution of our intelligent minds that caused these problems. And now that same intelligence is seeing a new value in nature. So as much as biomimetics can benefit humanity, Perhaps the birth of this new science will give us the best reason yet to become better stewards of all those lives that could make our own lives better.